Okay, so it never ceases to amaze me when I hear these things about these politicians, these DAs, and these democratically run cities. The corruption. I haven't highlighted a lot lately. I've had too much on my desk with the other stuff going on in the Sun Belt. But this is one of the biggest kept secrets, too. The amount of corruption. And think about it. Prior to the mayor, who's the mayor of Baltimore now, Jack Young, the three previous Sun Sisters that were mayors were all, all left in scandal. The last one went to prison. The one before that went to prison. They all were indicted on something. Now you have Miss DA who was in charge of the Freddie Gray era of Baltimore where they just basically said they're not going to arrest their way out of this problem. That was her famous quote. We can't arrest our way out of this. All the crime in Baltimore. What's happened since then? The crime has exploded in Baltimore. And this woman is a... She's responsible for so much. I don't know how she sleeps at night. I don't know how she sleeps at night. Now, she's a little cutie pie and whatnot. And she probably got passed on on her looks, you know, to an extent. But she ain't that cute. <laughs> she responsible for so much carnage in Baltimore by letting these people go. Letting these criminals go. And not prosecuting them and... When they, she does prosecute, she try. She asks for short sentences, and then she throws a bunch of stuff out. She's just like the DAs in St. Louis, Kim Gardner, the DA in Chicago, Kim Fox, the DA in Philadelphia, Larry Krasner, and on and on and on and on. Okay, so this is a reporter. She says, today I spoke with a convicted arsonist who explained how he set his ex-girlfriend's house on fire with her inside about a plea deal he got from the city's state's attorney Marion Mosby's office he said I shouldn't be out so this brother who got a plea deal for setting a sister's house on fire with her inside of it. Got a sweet deal and some short time and he was back on the streets. And they run around talking about they're the most unprotected. And everywhere you go, there's a sister DA letting criminals back on the street, being soft on criminals, being Friendly to criminals, not arresting them, throwing their cases out by the hundreds. Everywhere you look, it's a sister doing that. And we got sisters running around. We the most unprotected. Yeah, you don't know, no, no, no crap. The love of my life is in Baltimore. I know where she lives at. I pass her house every day to go to my uncle's house. And I can't even talk to her. Can't look at her. Can't say nothing to her. And in my head, it was kind of like some Romeo and Juliet type of thing where I was like, oh, if nobody can have you. If I can't have you, nobody can. Or at least nobody in Baltimore. And so that's when you went to her house and you burned That's when I went to her house. Um, how, the statement, how the statement said is that it started from the patio or it started from the patio. It didn't start from the patio. It started from the side of the house. The patio got burned down. Actually, it started from the central air unit. Um, the central air unit was detached from the house. So I realized that, yeah, by burning the central air unit, I'm not doing anything to the house. So in my better judgment, I went to the side of the house, start pouring gasoline on the side of the house and lit the side of the house on fire. 
Now, salute to this brother for being honest, man. <laughs> you know. He set his girlfriend's house on fire. With her inside because he didn't want any, if he couldn't have her, he didn't want anybody else to have her. And he's already home. And according to this interview, according to this woman, she, she said he shouldn't be home for what he did. But a sister, Marilyn Mosby, <laughs> gave him a plea deal. And now we want to hear about how this indictment, they're going after her because of race. This is racial overtones. And this, they're going after a sister. So be a bunch of sisters talking about how the government and the racist system is going after Marilyn Mosby. <laughs> when she just, her and all the other sister DAs, they're all putting brothers like this back on the streets to terrorize these women. Good that this brother seemed like he got a good head on his shoulder and he's very reflective, thoughtful, a lot of things the brothers don't have. He seemed like a good, a decent brother who, you know, was in the throes of, you know, love. I've been there too, in the throes of heart, heartache and love. And as brother um, Angry Man said, rejection, frustration, attraction. I got to give him credit for that because I've been there, but I never had a word to put on it. Rejection, frustration, attraction. When you get rejected and you just keep going back like a glutton for punishment, but you can't help it. You don't know why. It's a psychosis. It's a state of mind. It's, it's, it's a thing. Like it's not you. It's not just you. Once you, once you, once you with a girl, a girl, you know, and, and then she rejects you, curbs you, and then you keep going back, and she keeps curbing you. You can get locked into a mindset where you can't break it. You just got to keep going back and keep going back and getting care. And the more you go back, the more she pulls back, and the more she treats you like dirt. And now you're just. <laughs> Getting used and abused and treated like scum of the earth by somebody who you used to be in a relationship with. And it can happen fast, can happen in weeks and months. And the disrespect will only continue because you're constantly disrespecting yourself by going back and begging for more. So I think this brother was in a state of rejection, frustration, attraction. And... Tried to burn the sister's house down and got a, a get out of jail free card from Marilyn Mosby. That is amazing. So Criminal admits the sentence he got could someday cause himself to get shot. And he is saying he shouldn't be walking the streets. I was just charged with 18 different counts. I was dropped the 10 and then I was dropped the 1 when I shouldn't be out right now. That tells anybody <laughs> that, oh, I can go shoot somebody. Or oh, I can go attack the streets of my, and I'll be completely fine. That is amazing. This federal indictment alleges that Mosby falsely claimed financial hardship due to the pandemic. The indictment claims between May 26 and December 29th of 2020, Mosby submitted a request to get $40,000 and $50,000 from her city retirement account. According to court documents, Mosby falsely certified she met the requirements under the CARES Act because she experienced adverse financial effects due to the pandemic, but the indictment alleges Mosby did not experience such hardships. In fact, it says she got her full salary from January 1st through December 29th. The indictment. So, I mean, it was her money, but she wasn't, she got to wait till she retired to get it. She fired the hardship. That's something that a lot of people did. I see that done so many times. Um when I at places I worked at, um, she filed for hardship for forty thousand and fifty thousand dollars. But she was getting her whole check during the pandemic. So during the pandemic, when people were out of work and people were losing hours, regular working class people, she was getting her whole check. <laughs> 
She got her entire check. She didn't miss a day's pay. Mm. What did she do? She, she still turned around and filed for a hardship. She tried to take advantage of the pandemic and filed for a hardship, and they caught her because those funds are federal. Your, your retirement and all that stuff, that's federal funds. If everybody takes their money out now, that money is not <laughs> that but they don't have enough money to pay everybody to take their money out now. They 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 ration it out because <laughs> But yeah, she took out ninety thousand dollars when she was getting her entire paycheck while everybody else was suffering and getting unemployment checks and waiting for the next stimulus. According to court documents, Mosby falsely certified she met the requirements under the CARES Act because she experienced adverse financial effects due to the pandemic, but the indictment alleges Mosby did not experience such hardships. In fact, it says she got her full salary from January 1st through December 29th. The indictment also claims Mrs. Mosby made false statements in mortgage applications to purchase two homes in Florida she did not. According to documents disclosed, she had unpaid federal taxes on either application. If convicted, Mosby faces a maximum of five years in federal prison for each of the two perjury counts. She could face up to 30 years in federal prison for the two counts of false mortgage applications. She won't do a day in jail. She not going to do a day in jail, y'all. She won't plead. They going to give her a plea like she give everybody else. And she had probably has no priors. And this is what a lot of people don't understand about the system. A lot, and it's crazy how some people don't understand this. You got your cousins, your baby daddies, your uncles, your fathers, everybody's in the streets, everybody been to jail a thousand times, everybody in court all the time. And you know, they know nothing about the criminal justice system. Priors. Prior offenses, prior convictions. That will doom you in court. So you hear about the little Glacier Glider team. That, you know. Robbed his, robbed his neighbor's house or whatever. Did a burglary in his neighbor's house. He got caught and the judge gave him probation then you hear about the sun team you know who broke in somebody's house and the judge gave him 10 years and you want to say what <laughs> look at this man they gave the, the, the glider probation they gave it some sun team 10 years well newsflash that sun team <laughs> has been arrested 50 times and he's got eight prior convictions at 17, yes, still 17, but still, he's got eight prior convictions. <laughs> so, yeah, the judge is going to give him more time. And um, Marilyn Mosey won't do a day in jail. She, she, she's got a clean record. But the next time, she's in deep trouble. If she gets convicted of this, the next time she's in deep trouble. If convicted, Mosby faces a maximum of five years in federal prison for each of the two perjury counts. She could face up to 30 years in federal prison for the two counts of false mortgage applications. She will appear in U.S. District Court in Baltimore. That hearing has not yet been scheduled. Marilyn Mosby was first selected in January of 2015 and sworn in as the youngest chief prosecutor of a major American city. Mosby, who is originally from Boston, first gained major national attention just months into office when Freddie Gray died in police custody and she called for the indictment of the police officers involved. None ultimately was convicted. During the pandemic, she called for an elimination of prosecuting certain low-level offenses and that action soon made her a lightning rod and led to open sparring with Maryland Governor Larry Hogan. Marilyn Mosby is a mother of two. She is married to City Council President Nick Mosby, who is not 
mentioned in the federal indictment. We have reached out to Marilyn Mosby's office, have not heard back yet, and we will have much more on this breaking news later in the newscast. WJZ first to report on air today that Baltimore City State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby is now facing federal charges of perjury and making a false statement on a loan application. That federal indictment came down just hours ago. Hello, everybody. I'm Denise Koch. And I'm Lynn Bowie. We have live team coverage. Kelsey Kushner has reaction from the community, but we start with Mike Halgren, who's been going through this indictment. Mike, you've been digging through the charging documents, and what have you found? Lynn, Denise, this case revolves around Mosby's personal finances, not allegations of any wrongdoing on the job. There are allegations that she lied on loan applications for two vacation homes in Florida. We know the federal government has been painstakingly looking into her finances for about a year now. Uh, among the allegations is that she lied about her past tax obligations and how one of the vacation homes would be used in order to obtain a lower interest rate. Longtime Baltimore City State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby has been indicted on multiple counts of perjury and making false statements on loan applications for vacation homes. The federal government alleges she also took a withdrawal from her 401k account that was improper, saying she needed the money through a COVID-19 hardship withdrawal. Mosby makes more than $200,000 a year on the job. I, I couldn't tell you what would place a target. I can just tell you that in this position, I'm going to always do what I believe is in the best interest of my city and my community and public safety. If you're going to do what's in the best interest of your community and public safety, why are you always letting criminals back on the street? Why are you not prosecuting low-level crimes like burglary and strong-arm robbery? <laughs> In drug dealing and street walking. And things that just, if once you don't prosecute them, get out of control. Why are you not doing that? Why you don't have no foresight if you care so much about public safety? I, I couldn't tell you what would place a target. I can just tell you that in this position, I'm going to always do what I believe is in the best interest of my city and my community and public safety. Whether that makes me a target is on a, someone else. The federal investigation has been going on for months as the U.S. Attorney's Office has been combing through the top prosecutor's personal financial records. Representatives of the U.S. Attorney's so, Office previously like declined to comment. We never discuss uh, the existence or non-existence of any investigation. Mosby has long denied any wrongdoing in the case. So I'm not going to discuss that matter. I would refer you to my attorney. Here is an image from the indictment of Mosby saying that she has experienced adverse financial consequences stemming from the coronavirus, including being quarantined and having reduced work hours. There were two withdrawals from her 401k account that the government alleges were improper, one for $40,000 and another for $50,000, made between May in December of 2020. The counts carry a total of 70 years in prison if Mosby is found guilty. Previously, her attorney alleged she was being targeted politically. And so she's been sued by the police before. She certainly stood up and prosecuted cops for Freddie Gray. Hit one if you think before this is all said and done. They'll be saying she's been targeted racially. <laughs> Before this whole fiasco comes to a culmination, <laughs> hit one if hit two if you don't if you don't think so. Hit one if you do. Her attorney alleged she was being targeted politically. So she's been sued by the police before. She certainly stood up and prosecuted cops for Freddie Gray. And we have reached out to her attorney today for new comment. We have not heard back. City Council President Nick Mosby, her husband, is not listed as a defendant in this indictment. And no hearing date has been set. This case has been assigned to a fairly new federal judge, Lydia K. Grigsby, who is a Baltimore native. Reporting live at City Hall, Mike Helgren, WJZ. Thank you, Mike.